So this is a glimpse into the Jumbo Rocks campground uh, at Joshua Tree National Park in California. I mean, just look at this place. It is a virtual paradise if you're a hiker. And if you're a photographer, it's a straight up playground. Uh, I, mean, look at, I mean, look at these plants, these Joshua trees. Straight up out of like a Dr. Seuss uh, book. And these rocks are just out of the world from like the Flintstones. But as they say, don't take my word for it. You just have to see for yourself. In this video, I'll show you all you need to know about how to uh, find, select, and reserve a campground spot for yourself, uh, some of the costs, uh, the things that we brought, and of course, the view that we had from our campsite, including the moon right here at sunrise, uh, of course, the Joshua trees, which by the way, they can grow, yeah, up to 40 feet tall at a snail's pace, about an inch a year. All right, what do you say? Let's settle in and let's get ready for the ride. Using Professor Google, let's uh, type in Jumbo Rocks Campgrounds and you'll be able to see uh, some of the info from the National Park Service. But to actually reserve a site, we'll use recreation.gov. Uh, this will get us all the available sites uh, in a matrix. So if you see uh, R, it means that they're already reserved. So what we're looking for are the A's for availability. And if you scroll down, you'll be able to see all the different campsites, be able to select a site to reserve. And if you select the site number itself in the matrix, it'll open up a new window to show you some of the uh, information about that site, uh, such as how big it is, what's allowed, and some of the photos of that site that apparently other users may have submitted. And if you see a site that you're really uh, keen on, you can scroll down to see which dates that site is available or has already been reserved. As you can see, October is definitely a popular month. No surprises there. If any of you have been to the desert in the middle of the winter, such as like January here, uh, you know how underrated that cold can be at nighttime. Uh, so not for the faint of camping hearts. Uh, once you find a site, though, that you're ready to reserve, you'll see the price, including the taxes for that reservation on the bottom. And this is our site, number 56. Um, I definitely would stay there again. Uh, we've got this big, nice boulder off to the east, uh, so it's nice to be able to view. And then you can climb on top of that boulder, and this is the view. So some hiking trails uh, off to the south right there as we turn towards the west we have a great glimpse of the sunsets and as we pan you'll be able to see this teal and orange tent that's our neighbor's tent uh, our tent is behind this big boulder right here right down there next to that juniper tree and while much of joshua tree uh, has been formed by natural geological processes some of these footprint shaped markings on this rock seem a little suspect maybe it was the aliens We spent the previous day in Los Angeles uh, and then we went to Joshua Tree. So we entered from the west part of the park. Looking at a map here, it looks like we entered through a very uniquely named entrance called the West Entrance Station. Let that one sink in for a minute. For the most part, the drive is pretty straightforward. Uh, we just took this park boulevard all the way down and we stopped at a few different formations and Joshua Tree sites uh, along the way. All right, back on the road again, uh, on our way towards the Jumbo Rocks campgrounds.
honestly can't give you an estimate for how long this drive will take because it just depends on how many stops uh, that you'll end up taking. Yeah, it's almost hard to go off of some of these names on the map, like Oyster Bar. Yeah, count me in for happy hour. And as far as Hall of Horrors, no thank you. Although I do hear it's a pretty cool spot. Uh, so we passed along Sheep Pass <laughs> and all the way over to Jumbo Rocks. Yeah, as we didn't have a cell signal, navigation was pretty useless, but they still have good old fashioned signs. I'll take you along for the ride through this campgrounds. And uh, yes, I did speed this video up. So no, we weren't like speeding through this campground with uh, people walking through enough. I believe this campground I read has 124 individual different campsites. Uh, in addition, there's four pit toilets uh, that look just like this. Uh, but again, there's no sinks, no water, so if you need some water for uh, hygiene like we did, we brought about two gallons, that's all we needed, you know, with a washcloth uh, to be able to make ourselves comfortable uh, during our stay. Oh yeah, and that's uh, one night, by the way. Rocks also happens to be very conveniently placed next to uh, Skull Rock, which is a pretty popular uh, spot for people that visit the park. Although uh, we didn't actually visit Skull Rock uh, because we actually enjoyed so much of the other um, this landscape that we had in the park. Uh, we did pay an entrance fee of about $30 for uh, a whole vehicle, and that $30 applies for an entire week uh, that we were there, even though we only spent uh, two days there. You could also buy an annual pass or an individual pass if you're not going there in a vehicle. Although, I um, couldn't imagine what it's like to go there without a vehicle of any sorts. It must be really, really fit. Passengers, this is your captain speaking. If you look out to your left window, you will see a large metal receptacle known as a garbage can. And for each campsite reserve, you do get not one, but two parking spaces for vehicles. Although there was one car that was in one of ours, but that's all good because we only brought our one vehicle. So we park and get to business. But yeah, this is the view from the front of our campsite. Not too bad, eh? It was already starting to get to late afternoon, so we went straight to work in putting the tent together. Uh, we first decided to build on the north side of that rock, uh, but we felt a little exposed there, so then we moved it in between that juniper tree and the rock. Uh, then you could also see that the wind was already starting to blow in the afternoon, so we started getting that screen put together. The uh, problem is that I left a little bit of a gap exposed right there, and that would turn into a problem later in the evening. More into that. All right, time to do a little workout, of course. Got our air mattresses pumped, and here we are, settled into campsite number 56. And time for a little exploring. Oh, we got the slippers out. Nice. I'm gonna check this side out here. Go back to So as you can side. see from the tent on the other angle, this is literally right behind our campsite, this trail here, and it leads pretty much straight out into the desert. So no one was camping behind us. Now what a beautiful collection of dense shrubs right over there. Uh, some rocks and crevices and it reminds me, Joshua Tree is also home to a variety of animal species such as the rattlesnake. And in the remote parts of the park, uh, apparently uh, mountain lion, although they're not known to be near humans. But 
hmm, why don't we just explore a little bit further? Why don't we? Uh, but on a serious note, though, uh, one threat that you do want to be aware of is the possibility of walking over a little cactus, uh, especially a jumping cholla. Don't uh, forget about those out here. Now, the one great thing about Campsite 56 is right behind this uh, rock that I was hiking along yeah. is our campsite. So I got to check and see how my wife was doing. Oh, got the what? Oh, we have to blue it. Yeah. Oh, hey. How's it going? Oh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, I was surprised when this kid and his uh, dad uh, from SoCal were uh, also hiking on that same uh, area. And then we got to kind of hang out for a little bit uh, and watch the sunset. Uh, even the bugs are social around here. I'm not sure if these were cicadas or moths, but they were you know, buzzing around like hummingbirds and joining us for our evening barbecue. making the tent move a little bit. Yep. And we have a guest, wind. <laughs> As we tuck in for the night, uh, the crisp, cold, dry desert wind starts kicking in and threatens to keep us awake. Uh, and it creeps through that little gap in the um, side that I showed you earlier. I did wake up to cover that area up, uh, but it still wasn't, you know, resort living by any means. And while on like a weather app that you're checking or on paper, you know, 60 degrees for a low doesn't sound uh, that bad, but gosh, that wind makes it feel a lot colder than it is. Uh, but we were totally fine though with our sleeping bags rated to about 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So Joshua Tree is typically uh, renowned for its stargazing qualities, but tonight would be the moon's show as it rose just as the sun was setting, providing some spectacular views. Just like in the previous evening where when the sun set, the moon was rising, now as the sun was rising, the moon was still on the horizon about to set, providing again a beautiful view of uh, both sunrise and moonset.
know, after a chilly night, there's just nothing like that warmth feeling that sunrise on your skin. And even having a campfire to warm up some water is fantastic. And even the birds agree, uh, hanging out with us to sing a little song. And again, this would be a perfect timing to introduce some of the species of birds that live in Joshua Tree, uh, such as uh, thrashers, cactus wren, uh, woodpeckers, owls, ravens, uh, such a diverse uh, set of animals, and including these footprints, which literally just showed up when I woke up in the morning. A little bit weird, right? Ooh, and we even had uh, some ground squirrels uh, hanging out with us at the campsite. Just as we're taking off, uh, this little guy comes and has some juniper berries and, and yeah, just living its best life uh, as uh, we were as well. And just like that, it leaves without a trace. And, you know, I brought up those footprints earlier. You know, we definitely did not want to leave ours, so it was time to clean up, uh, put away our tents. And before that, though, I want to show you again the views from the campsite and the uh, surrounding trail. About a five, 10 minute walk away from our uh, campsite, there was a trail leading to, again, another great uh, visual point. Uh, I'll show you on a map where this was, but it, again, this is inside the Jumbo Rocks campground. And yeah, just great time to do some exploring before the sun got too high. Yep, what a perfect place to settle in and take a nap. And when you're hiking, don't forget to tie your shoes. Safety first. And why not talk to some of the locals uh, in the area as well? Imagine looking out outside of your home and having a view like that. So if you're curious where all that was, uh, so again, here's spot 56. And if you look a little bit north of where all the campsites are, there's are some hiking trails. And one of these trails leads towards uh, Elephant Rock. That's about the area that we were at when we took uh, those videos. And if you wanted to take another trail, you can have it go all the way over to Skull Rock, which again is another very popular site that people would drive to, but you can actually just walk over there. And like all good things, it uh, was time to have to end it, but 
On the drive back uh, towards I-10 heading to Phoenix, we decided to stop by the Choya Cactus Garden. And that was another great spot that I'd recommend that you have a chance to check out if you can. Uh, so many fluffy teddy bear cactus, but these are definitely not one that you want to cuddle. Nope. These are jumping choyas and they will even detach themselves and take you along for a painful ride. Yeah, I was definitely mesmerized and loved this place. I can't wait to visit again. I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, you found it helpful. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, again, please uh, feel free to like, uh, subscribe, and, and please uh, use this as a motivation to do some traveling, exploring yourselves. Uh, thank you so much, you all. Take care.